want to know why, ask how. Howard the Humongous. In the early morning of Wednesday, March 22nd, China's dictator for life, Xi Jinping, left Moscow after three days of meetings with Vladimir Putin. The get-together was calculated to be a move in the step-by-step process of replacing America as the leader of the global order. Replacing America with, you guessed it, China, and with China's sidekick, Russia. For the last four weeks, China has been attempting to portray itself as the great defender of world peace. It made that point big time on March 10th when it announced a peace agreement between Iran and Saudi Arabia that ended 21 years of bloody proxy wars. The announcement of the peace deal in China's capital, Beijing, cast Xi Jinping as the great world leader who had brought together the warring sides. Now, China is making efforts to portray itself as the broker of peace in the Ukraine. And in Xi Jinping's visit to Moscow, Xi spent what Putin called considerable time discussing his 12-point plan for Ukrainian peace. But there are huge flaws in that Chinese peace plan. At the end of the meetings between Putin and Xi, the two made an official joint statement in which each leader expressed his point of view. Xi bragged in his ending statement that China is impartial and objective. But the 12-point Chinese peace plan does not sound impartial and objective. Not at all. The plan does not acknowledge that Russia has invaded Ukraine. It does not call for Russia's withdrawal from the Ukrainian territories that Russia seized in 2014 and from the land that Russia grabbed in the current war. It doesn't even call explicitly for negotiation over these lands. China's peace agreement for the Ukraine seems to assume that Ukraine will give up those territories to Russia. In other words, it is not a peace agreement. It is a Ukrainian surrender. And the Chinese peace deal guarantees another Russian invasion in the future. Why? Remember, the last time Ukraine agreed to peace with Moscow was after Russia seized Crimea and the Donbass in 2014. The Minsk agreements of 2014 and 2015 brought relative peace, but left all the Ukrainian land that Moscow had seized in Russia's hands. The 2014 peace agreement merely gave Russia time to build up strength for the invasion of 2022. If Xi Jinping really wants to be impartial, he needs to involve Ukraine's leader, Vladimir Zelensky. But no conversation between Xi and Zelensky has happened, and none seems to be in the works. The ultimate indication of Xi's power as a peacemaker is what Vladimir Putin did within hours of Xi's departure Wednesday morning. Reports NPR, Russia launched 90 attacks using drones and missiles across the country, including Ukraine's capital, Kiev. Nine people were killed and several apartment complexes were leveled. What were Russia and China really trying to achieve with their meeting? Says Xi, he wants to, quote, improve global governance, close quote, meaning that he wants to govern the world. Xi also says that he operates with 
and, quote, unwavering commitment to the goals and principles of the UN Charter, close quote. In other words, Xi is telling you that America is no longer the ultimate guarantor of the principles of the UN Charter. That guarantor is now China, with Russia as a junior partner. Claims Xi about himself, quote, We only seek the truth. We always support peace and dialogue. And we firmly stand on the right side of history. Close quote. The right side of history is a reference to Xi's Marxist-Leninism. And Xi's Marxist-Leninism says that the United States is on the wrong side of history. It is a capitalist power, a capitalist power in decay, a capitalist power about to die, about to be replaced by a communist state, and about to be eclipsed by something even bigger explains Xi, Russia and China are working together to shape a community of common destiny for humankind. And roughly a dozen countries seem to have bought in to the Chinese destiny. Countries in Asia, Africa and South America. Countries in the global south. But if the common destiny of all humankind is to live under one-man dictatorships that jail those who criticize them, dictatorships that use facial recognition to measure your loyalty to the party before giving you a swatch of toilet paper in a public bathroom, I want out. This is Howard Bloom speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make or... <laughs> Want to know why? Ask how.